Come on, YouTube. Let's see how we're going. Let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me out there. All right, give a moment to YouTube. Let me know if, uh, post a comment if this is working. Let me see here. All right, I think we should be lurking, or working. <laughs> I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com, and I am back for another live video. Uh, I was sick for <laughs> like over a week. Uh, I had the flu, my whole family had the flu, but now I am back. Uh, so I'm still not feeling perfect and my mind is a little bit foggy, so I might not be as sharp as I usually am. And hopefully I don't cough or do anything in the, <laughs> in the video, but uh, this time being sick, it gave me a lot of time to be, uh, or a lot of time to think. And so I thought I would make a video just about all the, the things that I've learned over 20 years of helping people get fluent and explain, uh, yeah, <laughs> pardon me, we'll see, we'll see how this goes. I think YouTube is working though. Uh, but if you have any questions as usual, please post them in the chat. I will keep my eye on those, but I wanted to get through this first. Uh, all right, so it is, chat is working nice to see over there. Arturo, Bruno, uh, Sensillo, and let's see, Bears is working. Hi, uh, my teacher, Brazil, from Vincente, English with Slee. Hello, Drew, get well. So nice to see you there. Get some sleep. It's too late for you. <laughs> All right, well, let's get started. Uh, this should be an interesting video just because uh, if you have followed my channel for a while, this will be both for learners and for teachers. I know a lot of teachers follow me as well. Uh, and what I'm going to talk about in this video is applicable for any language, so it doesn't matter what language you're learning. Obviously, this channel focuses on helping people learn English, but if you're a teacher and just trying to get people fluent, uh, if the goal is not just to help them learn the language for a test, to remember certain things, but actually to communicate, then you will appreciate this video, I think. All right, uh, so I've been helping people get fluent for over 20 years. This YouTube channel is, I think, 13 or 14. How old is this channel now? 10 years old, exactly? I don't remember exactly. Yeah, I think it's like something like that, like 13 years maybe. Um, and over this whole time that I've been helping people learn, uh, especially on YouTube, I haven't really changed what I do as far as teaching. And it's interesting, like this whole time, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that, that history, um, like for me coming to Japan, still not uh, being able to speak, not, like not being able to speak Japanese, not knowing anything about um, like how to teach really. So when I came to Japan in 2003, uh, so that was 20 years ago, uh, I had, had already failed to learn a couple of different languages and I even failed to learn Japanese in Japan. Uh, so immersion was not the thing that got me fluent uh, and it's not really what helps a lot of other people get fluent either. So I will explain what does get you fluent in this video. Uh, but the interesting thing is if you can, if you, uh, well, I'll just kind of, I'm going to, I'm going to explain this in two ways. I'll try to explain this in two ways. Uh, this top line here, uh, where we, we have like the goal, we're trying to get closer and closer to this point over here, which is where you speak. So people actually want to, like the people I help, they're not just trying to learn the language so they can pass a test. They actually want to communicate. They want to understand what people are saying. They want to follow conversations or movies or TV shows or whatever, but also express themselves. And so this is really the important thing here, the thing I've been focusing on for so long and trying to explain to people how exactly this happens, all right? So how do you go from not knowing a language at all to actually communicating, to being able to speak? So we'll talk about kind of getting closer and closer to this point. Uh, and I also want to show this in terms of uh, like a target where we want to try to get to the middle here. Uh, and as my understanding improved over 
20 years of, of thinking about this and helping people learn and also being a learner myself, I got closer and closer and finally hit the bullseye in the middle uh, where, okay, I understand now like what I'm doing. <laughs> so hopefully this is clear, but basically I've spent uh, the past 20 years, once I understood like what I needed to do to get fluent uh, and how to help other people get fluent, then it was really just a process of explaining what that is. Okay, and I know that sounds difficult, but I, I, I think it will make more sense as I go through explaining this, my journey uh, from actually not knowing anything about teaching to now understanding really what people need in order to speak. So uh, as I mentioned before, I, I just want to start uh, when I came to Japan and I began teaching, I didn't know anything about language teaching uh, as far as like how we actually get people to speak. I just knew you had to tell people rules and they had to remember those rules and so that's what I did. I was basically team teaching at that point. I was uh, it was me with a Japanese teacher of English and that Japanese teacher would just tell people rules and this is for junior high school students in Japan. So the Japanese teacher would give them some rules to memorize and then maybe I would play some games or give them proper pronunciation, but that's really all I was doing in the classroom. So over here, I'm just going to call this uh, teaching English. <laughs> so teaching English. Now the reason I'm going to put teaching English over here, it's basically off of the target completely uh, because you can teach English without people actually being able to speak. And we see this all the time. Lots of people are teaching English or learning English. So if you are the student, uh, whether you're learning with a teacher or you're learning by yourself, you can be teaching or learning English. This is just the general category of the, the thing that you're doing where you're trying to memorize rules or understand things, but you're still very far off from the target here or this target here, which is speaking. So if we, if we put teaching English like on this same line over here, we're trying to get closer and closer to this point, but we're still very far away where we're just talking about teaching people English. And so when I first came to Japan, this is what I was doing, and lots of people are still doing this today. They're teaching the language, uh, but students are not actually becoming good speakers. And so if that is your goal, then we have to, we have to do better, <laughs> basically, uh, than just teaching English. And so the, the first like, real shift for me, uh, the thing that changed my way of thinking, uh, not only as a teacher, but also as a student, uh, is when I went to a park. So I was in a park not far from where I am recording this right now. Um, and I saw Japanese kids speaking with their parents. And I realized, like, well, they're completely doing uh, the opposite of what I was doing. So for me, trying to memorize rules or trying to learn through translations uh, or really anything you could think of at that time, we had like listening practice CDs. Most people, I don't know, maybe you just use uh, like listening online or through YouTube videos or something. But I actually had like CDs or mini discs out in Japan. <laughs> um, and so people are learning, you're, you're, you're basically doing the opposite of what people are doing. Uh, and this is where the, the first really big change for me came when I was, again, learning to teach uh, but also trying to get fluent in Japanese myself because I had been out in Japan for about a year and was not able to speak. So I was learning the language in the same way I was teaching the language, but I wasn't actually getting closer to this point over here, getting closer to this point where you're actually able to speak. And so this first big shift, uh, it occurred to me that instead of learning English or, or teaching English or me learning Japanese, um, doing the traditional way that I should be learning. So we're going we're gonna to get ourselves a little bit closer over here. We're going to put this point here uh, to learn like a native. So now we're getting a little bit closer over here. So we've got learn like a native, and that's going to be just better than uh, learning for, like, we're just going to... <coughs> Uh, teach your rules, but we want to learn uh, learn the language like a native rather than learn uh, like a typical student. Uh, but uh, it occurred to me at the time that 
even though I, I kind of understood what this means, it's really difficult for me to explain it. Because if I tell you, hey, just learn the language like a native speaker, like it's true and it will help you speak, but what does that really mean? Uh, and so, uh, of course, I was still frustrated because I'm not, I'm not at like exactly really helping people understand what they need to speak. So yes, it's true that you should learn like a native, but that's not like saying anything. It's like if I'm giving someone business advice and I say, oh, just build a, a profitable business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so if I if I just tell you that like oh well just make a make a business that makes money there you go like that's what you should do now that is true and that's correct uh, but it doesn't really explain what you should be doing to get fluent so it's a little bit better um, uh, but it's still uh, a little bit confusing for people it's still not very clear about what exactly you need to do to speak all right so we're moving closer but we're still not getting here because okay what does that mean what do we mean when we say to learn English uh, like a native. Uh, and so I, I tried to get better at explaining this in my, my next attempt, uh, like, and, and you can see this in my YouTube channel as I've tried to explain this over the years. Uh, so one of my, like probably the most popular video on the channel is to get fluent with one trick, which is explaining this. And of course we got a, a, a siren coming through again. <laughs> They couldn't wait. I was I was gone for like a week and a half, and and they now they're just it's it's like I never left. <laughs> All right, so we got teaching English, and then a little bit more specific learning English like a native, which still doesn't really uh, doesn't really like get get to the idea of of what exactly you need to do. And so this was important to me as a learner, uh, but also as a as a teacher. Uh, so, because I wanted to help my students speak, uh, especially when I was uh, teaching more like private lessons, uh, and these were students that actually wanted me to help them speak rather than just kids in a classroom that maybe they don't really care about learning English or they don't think it's important, they just need to pass the test, just like any other class that they have. So again, uh, this, this is really just talking about my history, so I began teaching English where I I don't really know anything about how to get people speaking. I just know I need to tell them some rules and maybe they become good speakers, maybe they don't, but uh, that's, that's all I knew how to do. But when I was looking at natives and contrasting what natives do versus what learners are typically doing, uh, it made more sense to me that, oh, I should do what learners or what natives are doing. Okay, so I should learn like a native rather than learning like a student. That made sense to me but still trying to explain to people what exactly this is. Uh, and so I got a little bit closer to this when I explained to people that you should learn English. We'll just abbreviate this here. I don't know, my, my pen is fading. Uh, learn English as a first language. Now, this is getting a little bit closer, but it still leaves people questioning, how exactly do you do that? What exactly does that mean? Uh, so initially, I, I thought about, okay, learning like a native, that makes sense, but a lot of students, number one, uh, they couldn't understand exactly what this means, and number two, they thought, well, you can't become uh, fluent like a native if you're not a native. And so just a, a, another thing uh, I learned uh, as I was learning is that you don't really, you don't begin by, uh, you're not born a native, so you don't begin learning a language as a native. Uh, the native is what happens to you as you learn the right way. So as you actually understand a language and you become able to speak it, you become native. Okay, so you don't actually start that. But a lot of people, when I explain that to people that, oh, you should just learn English like a native speaker, just do what a native speaker does. Uh, and you know the, the kinds of things that I'm doing in my YouTube videos, it's actually helping people learn that way. But again, this is this video is really about explaining my my thought process uh, as a learner and a teacher, and helping people get closer to this point over here, where they really understand uh, how they need to get fluent, and uh, and what's actually going to get them speaking. And so learning English as a first language was my way of basically saying the same thing, but uh, it, it, it helped people, I think, understand uh, that they don't need to be a native in order to learn like one. 
So again, people think they need to live in an English speaking country where they need to like be born a certain, you know, you need to be like having uh, native parents or something in order to get fluent. So this was a better way of doing it. But this even uh, still doesn't get us really to the point where we're at like where we're at here. So we're a little bit closer. You need to learn English as a first language. Uh, but where, where are we really going here? <laughs> and so that this whole time I'm, I, I continue uh, to, to teach the same way. But again, this is all about explaining uh, what I do. So now, uh, like very recently, like within the past, I don't know, maybe like few months or something, uh, I finally hit this where this was like the major breakthrough for me, um, not only as a teacher, but like, and again, I, I haven't really changed anything about how I'm teaching, but this is helping me uh, explain to people what they need to do to get fluent. And so what's really happening, uh, when I thought about what do you really need, what happens, what is, what is like this, this thing right here? What is the thing that happens right before you're able to speak? And so I thought like for years about this question, what is the, what is the thing that's really happening right before you speak? So we hear uh, from people about like comprehensible input, uh, which is where you're getting like, and it's comprehensible input is basically these ideas here where you're learning like a native, but even that it still doesn't, it doesn't really explain uh, what exactly you do, what kind of comprehensible input you need to get, how much of it should you get, uh, what are we really looking for? And so comprehensible input is, it's like up here too, uh, it's valuable and, and it's what we do, but it still doesn't really make it clear to people what exactly is the trigger point that allows you to speak, all right? And so I thought about like, rather than just thinking about speaking itself, like what is the thing that stops you from speaking? Or what is the thing that happens right before you speak? And so this is the big breakthrough for me uh, after 20 years of doing this and I'm making this video because hopefully uh, other people can watch this and then they don't need to take 20 years and figure this out for themselves. Uh, so the big breakthrough here is it really is the destruction, we'll just say destroy doubt. And that was it. Uh, and so if you think about what actually stops people from speaking, it's not where they live, it's not how much they know, and it's not uh, like whether they were born to native speaking parents or, uh, or I don't know, like how much maybe they study or even how much speaking practice they get. Really the thing that stops people from speaking is doubt. That was it. Uh, and, and so when you're trying to explain to people about, about how to actually become a fluent speaker, the thing you need to remember is, and this is from like a teacher, a teacher perspective, uh, is that if you have any doubt about uh, pronunciation or grammar or anything else like that, this is the thing that really stops you from speaking. And so the opposite is true. If you remove the doubt, then you naturally start speaking. So I've, I've talked before uh, about this like fluent communication switch uh, in your brain. You can think about it like a switch and the switch is controlled by doubt. And so when you're listening to something, maybe you can understand that information, but if you still feel unsure about how to use it or you're worried about pronunciation or something, there is whatever that doubt is, that's what actually stops you from using the language. So when the doubt is gone and you can get this, you can, like all of these things become ways to eliminate the doubt. So if I'm trying to help you understand like a native or give you comprehensible input or any of the other things that, that we might talk about as educators, uh, what we're really trying to do is destroy doubt. And so you can get this in a number of ways. You could hear a story or you could see a visual example, something that makes the language understandable for you that removes the doubt, whatever that doubt is. But once you remove the doubt, you naturally want to speak. Okay, so that, that is the, like this, and I know, I know it seems like a kind of simple idea, uh, but if you, like I, I spent 20 years trying to figure this out, uh, not only for myself, but also uh, like as a learner, because I'm learning Japanese. Uh, and I wanted to figure out like why I was able to say some things, but I could not say other things. 
And it, it occurred to me like, well, I can, I can understand these things, but how well do I really understand that information? So I've talked about that in other videos as well, where uh, I have like kind of the three levels of understanding information. So you might be exposed to some kind of information. Maybe you hear some language or I see, you know, in my case, learning Japanese, uh, I see like a Japanese written character but I don't quite understand what it means or uh, there, there's still some kind of doubt there. Uh, but I get to the awareness level when I can recognize it. But the difference between people who understand a language and people who speak are they have no doubt. Okay, that's really it. Uh, and so this, this part here, like this is, uh, that's the last thing. You can't get any closer than that <laughs> because once you eliminate the doubt, then you speak. There's nothing else stopping you at that point. So uh, hopefully, uh, I just wanted to give this kind of broad overview about my own history very quickly. Uh, I didn't want to take too long of a time to do this, uh, but hopefully this makes sense. I'll give a very quick review. Basically, when I began teaching, uh, I didn't really know anything about teaching or learning for myself, and that's why I struggled as a language learner as well. Uh, and so the, the shift initially for me where I started thinking, okay, I should be doing what natives are doing. But explaining what that is and, and all of the actual kind of steps that get you fluent, we're really just looking at this one thing here, which is eliminating doubt. And so if you have a worry about pronunciation, that's the thing you need to get more examples from other people about that pronunciation. As an example, uh, like I might come to Japan or I could, I could go learning this. This applies to any language. Let's say I go to Thailand uh, and I hear an example of just one person trying to teach me some Thai. So if I hear, like I have a Thai teacher who is trying to explain to me the language or help me learn, uh, I might hear a very clear example of good morning or something like that. Um, but in the real world, lots of different people will sound different. They won't pronounce things as clearly as a teacher would. And so there's still a lot of room for doubt. So the, my job as a learner or the person trying to teach me the language should be, uh, for this specific example, is to try to give me as many examples as I can to really understand uh, like what, what a pronunciation, kind of different pronunciations of that word might be. So like the word hello, for example. Uh, so in English, you might hear that same word pronounced a little bit differently. Someone might say hello. Uh, someone might say uh, like, hey, so they might use a different word. And so if I go to an English classroom and the teacher tells me hello, and they're speaking very slowly, very clearly, it's going to be a very different feeling when I get into the real world and people are pronouncing things differently or they're using completely different vocabulary. And this is why a lot of people, especially language learners, they will say, well, the, the real language sounds different from what I learned in the classroom. It's because it's a different language. Uh, but what's really happening is uh, all of the, like the language in the classroom and the language in the real world, they're, they're all correct. It's all different examples of things. But the, the difference here when we talk about learning like a native is that a native is getting all of those different examples. And that naturally removes the doubt that natives might have because natives experience doubt as well. And this happens all the time. It happens throughout life. Anytime you learn, let's say, some new vocabulary or you're looking at children when they're learning things and they don't quite understand what something means. Uh, but you can see that look in their face when they don't understand and then when they do. And they think, oh, okay, now I, I got it. Now I understand uh, how to do something. Uh, and so this feeling that you get when you solve a puzzle or you understand something, uh, that's this right here. And that's the thing that happens right before you're able to speak. So once you feel very confident about something, that's when the, the language begins to flow. And there's, there's really no uh, like thinking required at that point. The thinking, all it, it all comes before you start speaking where you're really trying to eliminate any doubt that you have. And so if you're a teacher and you're trying to help people get fluent, that's what your number one goal should be. It's really uh, for any doubt that a learner has, you want to eliminate that, all right? Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so I wanna go back, I will look through uh, comments here. Hopefully this makes sense. Uh, but the basic idea, what we're looking for 
is a destruction of doubt. Uh, and, uh, and, and you, you, you realize that when you, when you hear it, you're like, oh yeah, like that's it. <laughs> because once you have no more doubt, that's the thing that really stops you from speaking. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people think that they can't speak, as I mentioned earlier, because they don't live in an English speaking country or they don't have people to speak with. But remember, lots of English learners do live in English speaking countries and they do have lots of opportunities to speak, but they still don't feel native or they still don't feel very fluent. There's still something there, um, but what, what they often, they feel, but they can't really explain is that they just have doubts about particular things. Uh, and so this is why we get lots of questions and really my job as a teacher is just to help people uh, solve those questions, answer those doubts, and make that clear. And so the process of language learning becomes the process of doubt elimination. That's really it. So it's not just about like learning the language. What does it mean to be learning the language? It really means uh, for a particular situation, can I express myself? Can I understand what other people are saying? And can I do that without a doubt? Do I feel confident that I can speak? So people talking about, uh, like you will sometimes hear advice from people, uh, especially that are just doing like the teaching English part, um, like they will say, well, just like, just have courage and get out and speak. <laughs> but if you think about like doubt is, is the thing that really stops people and people don't like making mistakes in front of others, then of course it becomes the job of the teacher not just to teach the language, but you actually have to go all the way and remove the doubt, especially for uh, people who actually want to speak. Okay. So let me go back and look through chat. Hopefully this makes sense. I didn't, uh, this, I'm trying to give like 20 years in 20 minutes here, uh, but hopefully this should make uh, sense to people where we're not just trying to teach the language. Uh, and hopefully uh, as, I've, as I've gone over the years when I'm uh, like explaining this to people about like learning like a native or learning English as a first language, this is correct but it's still not clear. Like I want to eliminate the doubt from my own teaching as well uh, to help people really understand so that they feel confident that they know what they're doing. So if you're learning the right way and you feel more confident, you understand the language better, you feel more confident about speaking. And again, that's the thing that happens right before you speak. So if you eliminate the doubt, you naturally start expressing yourself. All right, uh, let me go back and check chat if you have any questions about this or anything else. Let me know. I'm trying to trying to use all my energy to, to maintain my uh, my my mind because <laughs> it's still it's still a little bit foggy. Uh, I I apologize for that. Ah, <coughs> oh, yeah, you can hear it. Oh. All right. Uh, let's see. Ordo and Julio says hello from Argentina and uh, Colombia. Daniela from Brazil. Hello from Haiti. Uh, Keith says, uh, hello, teacher, good to see you, nice to see you there, Bruno. Uh, talking to Danielle there, there, hello from Morocco, was at the beginning of YouTube, says Bruno, almost. Yep, uh, and so you can actually go back and watch, uh, like, the first videos I made on YouTube, they're all still here, uh, and you can see that the, the way I've been teaching, so I, I really discovered this, like, pro this process of learning like a native uh, before I started teaching on YouTube. But it took me 20 years to, or not really, not like, not 20 years, I guess, from, from being on YouTube, but like from the time I started teaching professionally. Um, and it's funny, like you can be a teacher and not really know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, we, I like apologize, but I, I, I cared enough uh, about my students and my own learning because I also wanted to speak. I don't want to just memorize some vocabulary. Uh, I want to actually be able to express myself. Um, but that's how I got to this point over here. All right, Daniel, I want to get from intermediate to advanced as soon as possible. I'm moving to the U.S. in June. All right, well, again, like you should, whatever the, the particular vocabulary you need for your life is, that's the, the destruction of doubt 
Uh, and this, this, this destruction of doubt, it really comes in many forms. Uh, it could be understanding grammar better. It could be uh, just understanding situations better where you're getting lots of examples of different native speakers explaining how they might, let's say, uh, what they say when they're angry or what they say when they're happy or what they say when they're ordering food, that kind of thing. So again, all of these things are correct. You should be doing these things like a native, learning the language as a first language, not learning through translations. Uh, but the goal is to keep going until you eliminate that doubt for individual words and phrases as you learn them. So you will be fluent in some things and then you will not be fluent in others and it's simply because you've got some kind of doubt about what those things are. Uh, but the more you eliminate that doubt, the better speaker you become. Uh, let's see, ever since I drew what's new, well, this is new over here. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, people enjoy that. Bridget says, uh, good day, Drew. Nice to see you. Nice to see you there. All right. Welcome back. Let's see. Learning a second language. It's challenging, sir. Yes. Uh, but it's it becomes a lot easier when you're not trying to learn it as a second language, like through English or through your native language. You should be learning it directly in the language. And the more you can do that, the faster you become a fluent speaker. All right, new, learning a new language takes time and effort. Sometimes I'm too lazy to think in English, and I ended up watching movies and series in my mother language. Yeah, uh, and so the way most people teach, uh, language becomes a difficult and challenging thing to learn. But you didn't really have that problem with your native language because the whole point of it was just to eliminate the doubt. Now, most people don't think about it, and like I've actually not heard uh, really anybody talk about this before I started talking about this, um, but when you're thinking about it as a parent, you're trying to answer the, the questions that your kids have or give them many examples, and, and often they don't get all the examples at the same time. So I might say to my child, wash your hands, and then, you know, like their mother says, wash your hands, and then grandma says, wash your hands. So they're getting all these different examples, and they're hearing how the pronunciation is slightly different, and that's informing their own pronunciation. So they're learning to pronounce things the same way as they get lots of different examples. But all these things, it's, it's about eliminating the doubt for understanding and eliminating the doubt for pronunciation and knowing the right words to use. Uh, but the point generally uh, is that language learning should be fun and it should be easy if you're helping people eliminate doubt. But for most language lessons, it actually is creating more doubt for people, which is why a lot of people struggle to learn the language and they're just thinking, well, this is, why am I doing this? Why is this, why is this so difficult? And it's just because they're doing this. They're teaching the language without actually eliminating any of the doubt. So if, you're, if your lessons are giving you more doubt, then uh, <laughs> you should stop doing that. All right, uh, Diaz says, thanks for your English learning lesson. Greetings from Florida, nice to see you there. Uh, Bridget says, how did you get that idea, Drew? Uh, I don't know which one you're referring to specifically, uh, but very quickly, uh, the teaching English thing is, it's pretty obvious for most people. Like this is what most people think of when they think of learning languages where they just need to memorize some grammar rules uh, or uh, maybe like, get some vocabulary flashcards or something like that. And hopefully if I can memorize enough, then I will become a good speaker. But typically it doesn't happen because we've still got doubt. And most people that are learning a language, like even if you learn through an app or something, the real world communication is much different than how people might you know, hear things in an app or even in a lot of language lessons. So you must have that exposure the same way you should be learning like a native. You should be getting lots of different native examples. Uh, and that's what actually builds your understanding and eliminates the doubt. Uh, let's see. All right. Uh, and Sanjin says, why native speakers pronounce is hard to understand, but my country's speaker pronounce is easy to understand. Well, uh, I don't know what country you're from, but typically uh, the people you are used to, they sound easier to understand. <laughs> uh, and the people you are not used to, so if you, if you don't, if you only watch uh, like English teaching videos here on YouTube, but you don't actually watch lots of native speakers speaking, then it will be more difficult and more frustrating for you. And you will think uh, it, it's just 
obviously more difficult to understand because you're not used to it. So you must get used to that in order to be prepared for that and to, and to feel confident about that. Uh, Daniela says, what is a breakthrough? Well, if, you could, if you think about like a physical uh, thing, like if I've got like a wall or something like that, I'm trying to get through that wall. And so for me, this wall here, I kept on, I felt like I was getting closer and closer to this point over here, but I still felt very far away. Uh, and so when I explain to people, oh, like just learn like a native. So I understood this myself, but remember as a teacher, often we understand things uh, and we continue to explain, but the student doesn't really get it. And so the whole point is to eliminate the doubt. And so the idea of a breakthrough, uh, you, can, you can think of this physically, like finally I was, I'm trying to get through this wall and finally I, I break through that thing. Uh, so you can use this as a, a verb, like when you break through something, or you can talk about it as a noun, like having a breakthrough. So if you have a breakthrough idea, like each one of these things I, I thought was like, a, it was a kind of a mini breakthrough helping me understand, okay, so we need to, we need to not learn like a student, we should be learning like a native. That made sense to me. Uh, but it's still not very clear as like a lesson plan kind of thing. How exactly do you get someone fluent? So if I say, okay, stop learning like a student, but start learning like a native, then people will still ask, well, what, okay, what does that mean then? <laughs> and what it means is that, like, as an example, a native is getting lots of different native examples that really help them understand the language, all right? So they're not getting one example from one teacher. They're getting many examples. Like if, if I go to a, a store and order some food, uh, like at a restaurant or a cafe or something, I'm going to hear different people uh, in that same situation saying different things. And so they're going to pronounce the words differently. They're going to say different vocabulary. Uh, and so if I only get one example, like if I have an, an English lesson about how to order coffee or something like that, uh, that's going to be less helpful. It will basically be incomplete uh, because it will leave a lot of room for doubt. But if I instead get a bunch of different examples of people ordering coffee, uh, then that will show me, oh, like there are actually a, a, like a range of these things. It's not an infinite range. There's a, a general uh, collection of a few things that people typically say. And once you learn those, then you feel much more confident. You are prepared for those. Uh, like if you're working at a cafe and you have different people coming up to you and asking you things, or if you're trying to order food, you will get those different uh, examples from other customers or you could use whatever you like. But uh, that, that way of learning, that is the way of learning like a native, but the whole point of it is to destroy the doubt. So you need to get more examples of things, whatever it is you need for that situation. So it could be pronunciation or grammar or vocabulary, something uh, that ends that question in your mind. So that nervousness, any nervousness you have about speaking, it just means there's some kind of doubt that's stopping you from speaking for that particular thing. So uh, as you, you're kind of destroying the doubt for each one of these individual things as you learn them. So it could be your pronunciation or your grammar or whatever, but it's for individual words and phrases. Uh, all right. Let's see. Hello, teacher. I have a question. Does elevator lift mean the same thing? Uh, I think in British English, like they use the term lift for elevator, um, but the American English is elevator. Uh, but yeah, you could, yeah, typically in America, we would say elevator. Eunice says, hello, teacher. Hello, Drew. Nice to see everybody here. Uh, Han Soya says, destroyed out. Yep, that's it. So whenever you feel doubt, like that, that should direct your learning. So if you have a doubt about something, then focus on that thing. Clear up the doubt, and then you will become fluent in that particular thing. Uh, let's see, German okay, answering that question, I think. Little berries along the path. Nice to see you again. Very true. Hello, everyone. How are you? Yeah, no doubt about it. Doubt is the problem, says Eunice. Yep. Uh, and you'll notice this is not just for language learning, it's really for anything. So if you have a doubt about street signs and you're driving, then that's going to cause you problems. <laughs> uh, or if you have a doubt about math or you have a doubt about whatever, like, like a doubt about what you should be doing socially, uh, all of those things, that's what causes us doubt. And that's why humans uh, are so, we're, we're very attracted to certainty. 
So we really want something to be certain. We want the guarantee. We want to know something will work for sure. And so that's why as a teacher, I spend so much time trying to, trying to give that certainty to students. Uh, King Ben says, uh, Dear Drew, do you drink some water because I feel maybe you're thirsty? <laughs> yes, I, I can have some, have some water over here. I'm, I'm still recovering from, uh, from my flu. So even though I'm not so thirsty, I actually had an apple before I started this, uh, before I started this live. I think I knew it, but I had forgotten, but thank you. Oh, okay, you guys are answering each other. Eunice says, if I had 1% doubt about something, I wouldn't use it or say it until I feel 100% sure and confident. Yes, uh, and so this is, this is true for most people in most things. Uh, so, like, the typical English teaching advice is uh, the teacher will give you some vocabulary or grammar or something to remember, uh, and then it's, it's basically on you as a learner to, to try to review that until you feel confident. And typically the test of it, like, a language test is very different from the test of real life. Uh, obviously, when you're in a, a real world situation, people are not going to do exactly what the teacher prepared for you. Uh, and so that becomes uh, a very, uh, I guess, a worrying or, or something that can make you feel very nervous. So in real situations like that. And so uh, you could feel maybe 90% confident or even 99% confident about something, uh, but most people will not want to speak if they feel that, all right? So you could know something like really well, but if you don't, if there's still some kind of doubt, that's what, that's what will stop you from speaking, okay? So that's this thing right here. So what is the thing that happens before you speak? It is the elimination of doubt. So whatever that thing is, uh, you need to eliminate that. And then you will feel much more confident and naturally start speaking. All right. Let's see, Ali says, hello, from Iraq to Japan for American accent learning. Yes, yes, I can be in Japan and still give you an American accent. Nils said, I discovered your podcast and love listening when I walk with my dog. Glad to hear it, Nils. Stay warm over there. Uh, Wukong says, quite understand what you mean, hopefully. Uh, I'm from Ukraine. Am I late? Well, you're never late. Uh, it's good to be on time, but you can watch these videos anytime you like, so you're never late for them. Everson Drew, please help me. How could I feel with more trust to speak? Yes. So what you're talking about, Jefferson, is you're basically saying you have doubt about something. And I'm recommending you get specific about that doubt. So whatever, like think about uh, like maybe you're in a, a particular situation. You want to talk about something, but uh, I can't speak. And I'm worried about something, or I'm nervous, or whatever. Uh, but really think about that. And if you can solve that problem, uh, maybe you, you need to get more examples, or you just need to understand something a little bit more clearly. Whatever that is, the the question you have that will will tell you the answer. Okay. So like this whole process for me, the question I had is is what's really stopping people from speaking. So it's not where you live because people get fluent all over the place. And it's not who your parents are because many people who have native parents get fluent and many people who do not have native parents get fluent, all right? Uh, but the thing that everybody has is they have the confidence to speak. So if you can speak, then you have no doubt about something. So it becomes uh, the number one thing for language learning, but really, I mean, for anything, really. Um, if there is a question in your mind about something, that will stop you from expressing yourself or, or going forward, whatever that is. So you need to get that certainty to move forward. All right. Uh, let's see, Jocelyn, salute to you, sir. Marcos, hi, I'm from Brazil. I've been watching this channel a while. Thanks a lot for your dedication and excellence in teaching. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Yeah, I feel like I'm actually at the end of a long journey. <laughs> <coughs> Because now that I've found this, I can, I just, you know, I continue teaching, doing what I'm doing, but like this is, uh, the explanation of what I do becomes a lot easier now. Uh, so when I, when I actually explain to people, I'll put up another term up here for you uh, that I created to make this a little bit easier for people to understand. This is the fluency trigger. F-L-U-E-N-C-Y-T-R-I-G-G-E-R. So a fluency trigger is anything 
that eliminates the doubt. So it could be a story or it could be a visual example, something like that. Like if I have, if I'm trying to teach you the phrasal verb put on and take off, so the same way I would teach my own children that, I'm giving you a visual example here. So I put on the cap. So here is the cap for the marker, put on the cap and take off the cap. The same way I might actually have a hat and I put on the hat or take off the hat. So as you get more examples of that, that thing is triggering your mind to eliminate the doubt and you feel, oh, okay, I got it now. And once you feel that, uh, that's when you start speaking. All right. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Uh, Gaurav, Gaurav, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, apologize. Uh, from India, Aziz says, sometimes I feel nervous for not being able to speak fluently. Tell me what to do. Well, then why, why are you nervous? What exactly are you nervous about? And it's easy to, to feel nervous about communication in general, but what I'm telling you is that you need to focus on particular things, eliminating the doubt for each one of those things as you learn them. So for me, like let's say I'm, I'm trying to learn the written Japanese characters, uh, and there are like thousands of these things. <laughs> Uh, you only really need to know maybe like 2,000 of them, uh, but that's still a lot. And, and you still have, uh, I mean, it's basically a lot to learn. And for most like Japanese people learning them, they spend 12 years in school learning them all. Uh, so I don't want to spend 12 years. I actually want to do it much faster. Uh, but what happens is there are, there are 12,000 of these. I'll just draw some kind of fake characters right now. But let's say there's this one, and there's this one, and there's this one, and that one, and this one like that. And so you have all these different characters. And you can, you can, you can make the problem too big for yourself and just think like, wow, like it's really difficult to learn all of these things. The, the better thing to think of is, how can I just learn this one character? And then once I learn it, and I feel confident about it, and I know I could use it, I understand it well, okay, I can check that one off, and I go on to the next one. So you're actually becoming fluent in each one of these things individually. All right? So you can enjoy uh, each one of these things. You can learn it well. You can really feel confident, and then move on to the next one. But uh, the, the typical thing, people kind of make the problem too big uh, and they talk about like I, like, I can't get fluent in English. So I always remind people, you actually become fluent in individual words and phrases. So pick one thing and then get fluent in that. It's actually a very quick and easy process uh, when you understand it like a native, when you basically just destroy the doubt. Obviously, it's more difficult if you're doing it by yourself. Uh, this is why we, we have like everything we have organized in Fluent for Life to help people understand the language, uh, but it is possible to do. Uh, but that's the whole goal here. So make the problem uh, like manageable, focus on one thing at a time, and then get fluent in that. So if, you might even have uh, difficulty talking about one thing, but maybe there are some other things you already can talk about. It's because you already eliminated the doubt about those things. Um, let's see, just got here. What did I miss? Well, you can go back and watch the rest of this live anytime. Uh, let's see, uh, Sadoki says, uh, how to learn like a native, give some examples. Uh, so I just gave that one example of understanding, like take off and put on, uh, or I get here's another cap, like take off this cap and put the cap back on, or I take off my shirt and put the shirt back on. So that's an example of getting many different examples of learning something like a native. So you pick a specific thing, and I'm trying to give you different examples of it till you really feel, oh, okay, I got it. So you put something on, and you think, what else might I put on? Like, okay, I could put on some gloves, or I could put on a jacket, or I could put on something else, or I could take those things off at the same time. Um, and so the point is that you feel confident about that thing, whatever that is. So the grammar or pronunciation or vocabulary, uh, but you should be learning it like a native rather than trying to get translations of something. So that's why, uh, like in this video, I'm not using, I don't use like Japanese to teach Japanese speakers English. I teach 
English to everybody the same way because we all get fluent the same way if we eliminate the doubt. All right. I think people are getting it, though. Let's see here. I'm trying to go through uh, quickly here. Uh, let's see. Is there any difference between American English and Canadian English? Oh, there are some differences. But again, like, be, be specific about, like I gave an example before, about lift in the UK versus uh, elevator in the United States. So some things are going to be similar or the same, and other things will be different, like the pronunciation or the vocabulary. Uh, are breaks in learning English so bad, or should I take little breaks sometime? Well, you're, uh, if, if, you're, if, if the language learning isn't fun, then you should probably stop doing like learning the way you're learning, whatever that is. So I mean, like if you're doing something that you enjoy, you usually don't need to take a break from doing it. Um, but what you will find with language learning is that sometimes you get an example. Uh, like I've, I've told stories like this before about uh, like what's one example? Uh, like a Jap just another Japanese example. Uh, just let's say I, I learn. Uh, a word, <coughs> make sure this fits over here. So I, I, I think I've told this story or different stories with, with different examples like this. Uh, but let's say this is a like five year uh, time span here. So I learn a word, I hear a word uh, for the first time over here. Uh, what was that example? Uh, shuseki. So here's an example of Japanese. I've told this story before. So my two daughters, they go to kindergarten, or my, my older daughter used to go to kindergarten, uh, and they have a little attendance book uh, where they would uh, just you get a sticker for each day that you're in class. Uh, and they call it a, a shuseki kado. Uh, and when I first heard that, so this is, I don't know, five years ago or something, I first heard shuseki. Um, and... And I thought, okay, like I understand what they're talking about. They're just like, Shuseki just means this little card that they have. Uh, but then like five years later, I hear an example about like Shuseki Suru about attending a meeting. And then it suddenly clicked in my mind, oh, like Shuseki means to attend something. Okay, now I understand what that means. I mean, I, I learned this in Japanese. I didn't get an example or a translation or something through English. So there were... The first example I got and the second example I got that really, like I needed both of those examples to make something clear, all right? Now sometimes you can understand something immediately, like that's what I'm trying to help you see, like here's a physical example, like put on or take off. Uh, but with this example, shuseki, uh, I hear it, but then I don't really understand what it means. I, I, like, I'm like, okay, I don't know. It's a school card or something. I don't really know what that word shuseki means, though. Um, but when I hear that example again, and finally, I got it. Now, the goal of a teacher is to take these two examples and put them as close together as possible. All right. So a good teacher will make it clear to you uh, how you can understand something with different native examples. And that way, we don't, we don't need to use any translations to teach you because I'm helping you understand it all in English. All right. So a good teacher should do this. Uh, but my, my point in answering that question about me, uh, people needing to take breaks, uh, it, it seems like it took a long time for me to learn this, and it might have been frustrating for me if I just keep repeating the word over and over again. So that's when you might need to take a break. But typically, you just need to keep getting examples, but you should be getting different examples. And it should feel fun if you eliminate the doubt because your brain likes puzzles and your brain wants to solve this puzzle so it can communicate. It's, a, it's like a fun and cool thing to, to speak to people in a different language. Um, and it just means you solve the puzzle. Uh, and, and so like rather than like people just giving you the same example over and over again, like if I hear like shusekikado, 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 whatever like that, that vocabulary again and again, I'm, I'm trying to force myself to remember something, but I don't really understand it well. I haven't eliminated the doubt. But as soon as I get that second example, that's when the doubt is gone, all right, for this example. And so uh, if you can learn like this, you want to put these two examples as close together as possible, and it should feel fun as you learn because you're trying to solve a puzzle. Your brain wants to do that already. 
Uh, and, and when you feel that, you know you're doing the right thing. Uh, hello from Texas. It took me one year to understand Sri Lankan English, two years for my friend to understand Indian English. I see. Make this note, don't become a victim of yourself. <laughs> That's true. Uh, let's see, I practice speaking every single day by speaking to my husband online, uh, but basically the same subjects. I hate learning grammar rules. I can reach the fluency just listening and speaking and reading. Well, just like you need to, you need to get more examples for the particular things you want to learn about. That's how you do it. So if you already know how to talk about something, then talk about something different. Or if you already know how to express it in one way, then use like a different example. So like you don't, I don't want you to think about like trying to memorize grammar points. The point is really in what situation do we say something? So I might say, yesterday I played baseball. And I know how to talk about the simple past, just say, here's the thing I did yesterday. But maybe I want to talk about that as a part of my personality. So I, I don't say like, oh, I played baseball yesterday. I can say, oh, I have played, all right? So we can talk about this as like, oh, that's the present perfect or whatever. Um, but rather than trying to think about it like a grammar rule, you think about what is the what is the situation here? What are we trying to express? And so when we eliminate the doubt, we think, oh, like the present perfect it's is really talking about uh, like who you are as a person. And I can have green eyes or I can have a brown shirt or I can have short hair, but I can also have experiences. So I can talk about like I have, been teaching. Oh, here's the present continuous. Like, like I have been doing something uh, for a while. Or present perfect continuous. Excuse me. Uh, but, but you get the point. So it's not about learning grammar rules or trying to focus on that. You just think like, oh, what's what's a, a different way I could express something? All right. Because natives don't know the names of all these grammar points, and they couldn't give you an example if you asked for one. But they can use the grammar correctly. And that's the point. And so you, you should be working uh, to get that same level of understanding. It's just the elimination of doubt that gets you there. Uh, all right, let's see here. Uh, but I will make it again clear that you don't even have to speak to do this. You just need to get lots of examples uh, that help you understand it. So you don't need to be speaking every day to do that thing. Uh, Madame Tech says, uh, you are the best in, in Turkey. Nice to see you there. Thank you very much. How can I start learning? Well, you're learning right now. Well, I've just started to feel disappointed. Oh, no. Well, you know, just watch it again. Jefferson, what do you recommend uh, for me if I want to take one of those international exams? Well, I, I would recommend, uh, I don't know, to talk, talk to someone who, who focuses on that. I don't, I don't have a particular focus on IELTS or any of those tests. So if you want specific information for that, look for people who uh, focus on that. Mara says, thanks for a great job. Big love from Armenia. Uh, well, don't worry about it. Remember, like, uh, the, these lives are all saved, so you can watch them later. Tong says, hello, sir. Do we need completely maintain, do we need to completely maintain the structure of sentences when speaking? What do you mean by that? You mean, do you need to speak correctly? It's recommended that you do, <laughs> if, if that's what you're asking for. Um, but yes, try to, try to be, be simple, make sure you can explain something. And remember, there are many ways to explain things. Often you can take something that's difficult and explain it in a simple way. So if you don't feel confident about some grammar, then you can go back to something easier. Eunice says, to be or not to be, that is the question. You need to ask the right questions to get certainty. Uh, the, to get the problem solved. Yes. So it, remember, like that. That's that's for like me as a learner. Then I need to get certain about. Uh, like I, I try to get better about asking questions uh, for the things that I'm learning, like learning those Japanese characters. Uh, so if I have a question about that, that or or I'm uncertain about something, then I know I don't know it well enough yet. So that's the thing I need to focus on. Take off also means buy. Yes. And so this is where you're starting to learn more examples. Like if I have like, okay, I have to take off in the same way like an airplane might take off. 
And as you get more examples, then your brain is like, oh, like, wow, that's very cool. Like, now I can, I can understand that thing even better. So that's how children are learning the language. So they're learning it in English, and they're getting more examples that deepen their understanding of something. So I learn a basic thing like take off the marker or take off the cap and put on the cap. And I can also talk about an airplane taking off, like the airplane is also leaving. You know, we, we understand uh, in a similar way, take off means like to leave in that way. And I also need to take off. So I need to go uh, away myself. And so as you get these different examples, you feel much more confident about the meaning of take off. And so you can understand it more easily and you use it with greater confidence. Uh, let's see. Okay, go again. It says, hello, teacher Drew. Hello again. Uh, Bruno, hey, I'm glad to be here. Change the way you learn English if you don't enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> and change the way you teach. I know some people get stuck. Uh, but if your goal is to actually help people speak, then you need to eliminate the doubt. That's it. Harwin says, uh, I opened using this word where I love read close every time. I don't confident when I use this word. Can you help me understand? I open using this word where. What 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 word exactly do, are you are you are you struggling with? I don't understand from the from the comment. I love read close every time. Yeah, I don't understand what 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 is the specific word. Mama says, I'm trying to pick out some information from what is left on the board. Ah, I know it's like a puzzle, isn't it? Well, basically, this is my, my own journey from getting to the, uh, the center of the bullseye, uh, the center of the target over here. Uh, and this is another way of expressing that. But basically, I, I talked about going from teaching English, which is not really even on the target at all because... You can do lots of teaching and still never become, uh, or as a, as a learner, you can learn English and never become a fluent speaker. All right. So what do you really need to become a fluent speaker? Well, you need to understand the language like a native uh, or learn English as a first language. But really, uh, the thing you need to do is destroy any doubt that stops you from speaking. That's it. And so what I do, what I've really been doing for many years is giving people fluency triggers, which is uh, these, it could be little stories or physical examples or something like that that helps you understand the language like a native. And so when you feel confident that you understand something, that's when you speak. All right. Uh... Let's see, now says, I need to thank you for what you're doing, giving your time, and I learned many things actually from you. Glad to hear it. Jow says, I teach you. Kevin, look at that. Nice to see that big, uh, smiley, blue thing. Um, Danielle says, thank you very much for answering me. Good night. It's my pleasure. Tong says, thanks, sir. El says, says, are Camly lessons useful to increase my knowledge and improve my accent? Uh, I can't really speak to uh, lessons from any particular place, but... Uh, th this, this lesson is, or this video is really to help people understand how they should be learning, uh, or even as, as a teacher, if you're teaching. Uh, but the problem with most even private lessons, like you could go to Cambly or whatever it is, uh, the way that people teach, and even, even me right now, the way I'm speaking is different from how natives will often speak normally. Uh, and even me, my native speaking voice is different from the way I speak in a video like this because I want to be understood. So I'm trying to be intentionally clearer uh, and slower, using simpler vocabulary, making it easier for people to understand. So what I do in Fluent for Life is I give you a combination of both things where you're getting uh, kind of lessons that help you understand things, but you're also seeing lots of examples of how natives really speak. So if you're getting, it doesn't matter if you're getting private lessons or like online or in person, whatever. If you're only getting simple, easy to understand lessons, you are not likely going to be prepared for actual communication. And so you need to get those examples if you want to become uh, a confident speaker. So it doesn't matter like where you go to get those, uh, but typically, uh, most people don't, like even as English teachers, they don't understand this or they don't, they don't really think about it. Like, like they will teach one way in a lesson and then when they're finished with the lesson, they will speak differently and not think about it. <laughs> uh, and so again, like you have to think about what your goal is. If your goal is 
to speak or if your goal is just to like learn some language maybe to pass a test or maybe to understand something. Uh, where can I buy a material to achieve B2 level without extra information C1 or C2? Uh, well, I, again, like you could be B level or C level in particular like you could be able to talk about certain things and not talk about others. Uh, I would recommend Fluent for Life actually, uh, but again, for people who, Fluent for Life is really for people who want to uh, go from understanding English so they can understand my videos here, but they still have trouble understanding people and speaking confidently. Uh, and so that's what I would recommend. And then you can focus on the particular things you need for, for your life, whatever that is. So you don't, I mean, you could continue to, to get more lesson sets um, and go through more of the program and, and continue to improve and work up through these kind of fluency levels like A1 and B and C, that kind of thing. Um, but you, you actually focus on getting fluent in particular topics. So you learn how to talk about specific things or use particular grammar points to describe kinds of things. Uh, but Fluent for Life would work for you. Uh, Jiyun says, uh, is this example, is, uh, oh, you'd say, does this sentence make sense? For example, I have lunch prepared versus I have prepared lunch. Um, well, they would mean, these actually would mean two different things. This is an interesting example. Um, like, I have lunch prepared, wait, I have, before that disappears, I have a lunch prepared versus I have prepared lunch. Like, I have prepared lunch means like I did something. Uh, but that could also mean like I had someone else do it for me. So without getting more information, you, you would need to know, um, like it's, it's a little bit vague. So they don't mean exactly the same thing. They could mean something similar depending on what exactly you mean. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <coughs> let's see. But yeah, that's it, an interesting thing. Like to, I have, I have lunch prepared means like, like I, I did it already, or it could mean someone else did it for you. All right, so without more examples or more information, it's hard to tell. Nicholas said, you are the best teacher, or you're too kind. If you know other people, I can help. Please send them my way. Mars says, I've been learning English for already five years. For me, the key was listening to much. I have found your account when I was a beginner. It was stressful because I wasn't getting what you was. Yeah, if, you're, if your level was not at, at like a good enough level for, for what I do. I do have some content for beginners on the channel as well, but most of it is for people who already understand English but have trouble speaking. Uh, Vish says, hello, sir. I'm from India. It has been days since I watched you online. Thanks. Is it good to learn two languages at one time? Uh, in my case, English, B1, and Japanese. Uh, if you can keep them separate in your mind and learn them in, like if you can learn Japanese in Japanese and you learn English in English, it's possible to do that. I mean, th think about taking, taking classes at a, uh, at a school, like you might have five or six different classes you're, te you're taking at the same time. So you might be learning science and economics and something else, like it's the same kind of thing. The point is to kind of keep them separate though. Uh, talking, but now even though you do speak understandable for us, but even fast speech is clear to me. Yeah, because you become used to my accent over time. Uh, Katrine says, uh, civilities, din, din, din. The only two, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Minori for a woman, let's see. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, if, you, if you don't understand, then you can, you can ask, but use your English. Use your, use your English. All right. Uh, harder, let's see. Katrina, I don't know what you're talking about. Let's see. Thank you so much for being here and teaching us a lot of things. It's my pleasure. Let's see. Uh, Faris says, hello, sir. What are your tips for studying for job entrance tests like TOEFL Center? Because there are some several topics that are different from regular studying. Again, I, I, I don't want to give any advice about tests because that's not my focus and you should get good advice for that. So like, I'm not a baker. I can't give you advice about baking. Um, I can help you become a confident speaker. That's what I focus on. And that will improve your test scores as well. Um, but if you, uh, if you're looking for specific test information, I would focus on that. So find someone who does that and get that information. Uh, 
Z Cheng said, wow, cool. Is this a live stream? I love you so much. Yes, it is. And welcome. I appreciate the love. Uh, but also remember, we make these videos available for people to watch later. So even if you can't catch them live, it's okay. Mama says, I think people need to feel uh, them when they express themselves so we can keep communicating with us. Don't you? I think people need to feel them when they express themselves so that we keep them communicating with us. I don't know quite what you mean, but if you're talking about like understanding people, yeah, that's, that's, if that's what you mean, that's part of the, uh, the goal of, of communication. You want to express yourself, you know, and you want to hear the other person and, and talk with them. And it's an amazing thing when you can do this in a different language. Um, and so remember, you focus on, um, I've, I've talked kind of very generally about fluency in this video, uh, but remember that you should be thinking about specific issues or specific problems, specific times when you struggle to speak. So during those moments, uh, think about like, oh, I, I, I notice I have trouble talking about this. Then focus on that thing. Like that, that's the thing you should, you should lean into that. That's a good phrasal verb for you there, to lean into. So here we have a, like I'm leaning into the camera, like to lean like that. I'm leaning into the camera, but I'm leaning into that thing. I'm, I'm kind of putting my energy into that thing. Even though I might feel nervous about that thing, I actually want to lean into that thing, like not try to move away from it. I want to move closer to it. So if I have a, a grammar point or something that I'm struggling with, I, I want to attack that thing. I want to remove the doubt, especially if I'm trying to do this by myself. If I have a teacher, so I don't really have a Japanese teacher, uh, and I, I can't really ask my wife because she gets mad at me. She's like, I don't have time now to <laughs> answer my questions about Japanese. Uh, so often I have to figure these things out. All right, Minori's got it over there. Okay, look at that. Good English. All right, how can we have access to videos fluent for life? I'm from Iran. Uh, I don't know if we, I, we might have like members from Iran in the program, uh, but they probably get someone else outside of Iran to join for them. So often if people can't, uh, like if you can't use a credit card or PayPal or something like that, uh, people will just have someone else pay for them and then they pay them back in cash or however they do that. But that's how we welcome people to the program. I know not everybody can join. Uh, that's why I try to make videos for people here on YouTube as well. But if you can find a way, I hope we can welcome you. Uh, Joseph says, as a beginner, can I be a fluent speaker in one year? Well, you're probably not a beginner if you're watching my videos. But remember, yes, you can. Like, if you learn the right way, you can become fluent very quickly. Uh, but remember, you get fluent in individual words and phrases as you come to eliminate any doubt you have about them. So the faster you can do that, just like I gave this example over here, like me learning Japanese by myself, it took me five years to understand one word, okay? Uh, and I wasn't trying to study it. It's not like I had been studying it for that long, but it was this amount of time it took me to understand something. So if I had a good teacher that knows how to teach, I could probably learn that same thing in one minute. All right, I gave a lesson about this, like, I think it's called How Fast Do You Want to Get Fluent? But I talked about, like, kind of like folding time. So, like, if you, you have a piece of paper like this and you, you fold uh, the, the paper, you can bring these two things that it seems like they're far apart, but they don't have to be uh, far apart. You can bring them together basically instantly. And this is why, like, you notice me when I'm giving examples in these lessons, I'm trying to give you multiple things that really help you understand something because I know I need to eliminate the doubt. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. But yes, you can definitely become fluent. Like, especially people, like, if you already understand a lot and you join Fluent for Life, uh, people are speaking better in the first month that they're in the program. And then you just continue to do it for as long as you like, uh, and you will continue to improve a lot. I'm Chinese. Thank you, teacher. Good job. It's my pleasure. Uh, Harm says, it just piped in uh, in this stream. How much time is left before we wrap this up? Well, I think we're done. We got through all the comments. Uh, unless you have a particular question, here you are. Let's see. Uh, you would say like, like it, this, this use of the phrasal verb, you would talk about like piping, piping up. To pipe up is it's a little bit uh, like piping up also means like you've been 
like sitting and watching something for a while and then you finally say something. So if you just join us, that, that uh, example is a little bit different. But that would be like someone like piped up in a, in a meeting or something like that. So if I'm talking, there are a couple of people sitting and listening and one guy is very quiet. He's sitting there for 20 minutes and finally he pipes up with some kind of information. So he says something, oh, okay, I have a question I don't understand. Like, oh, he's piping up at that point, to pipe up. Pipe in is different. Uh, pipe in is when you actually, you take something and you like transport it kind of like with a pipe. <laughs> so if I, if I have a building and I, and I move like, I don't know, like some, let's say, I don't know, some water, I can pipe in Water, it just means moving that, that water with a pipe to pipe something in, pipe something in. So piping up, piping up, and piping in, two different things. And that's why it's important to get lots of, uh, lots of examples. All right, uh, greetings from Saudi Arabia. I love the way you teach, glad to hear. Yes, and usually when people talk about like enjoying the way I teach, I know everybody, like every teacher has that, you know, on YouTube videos, but uh, the goal, it, it just should be like, you, you should feel like, oh, I got it now. That's my goal, to eliminate the doubt. Uh, and that's when you start, uh, when you start speaking. All right, Nils says, get well soon, Drew. Well, thank you very much for the well wishes. Mom says, I wonder if I can teach Arabic to American people the same way you do. You think I should try it? Yep. Uh, everybody learns English uh, or Arabic or whatever the language is the same way. Uh, and again, if you can eliminate the doubt and you can actually teach people. So I've given this example uh, like uh, my, my marker, my Japanese uh, marker example over here. And I can just teach you Japanese in Japanese without using any English. <coughs> So maka, 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 maka. Kuroi maka, kuro, kuroi maka. Ao, aoi maka, aka, akai maka. Ne? Kuro, ao, aka. Kuro, ao, aka. Ah, saifu, saifu, maka. Kuroi maka, kuroi saifu, saifu. Now, you might not remember everything I taught you there, but you're starting to understand Japanese the same way a Japanese child does. And if you could continue to get more examples, and you were just, you're still learning like a native, but I'm helping you eliminate the doubt. And so you feel very confident about what something means. You're like, oh, look at that. Like, kudo means black and ao means blue. Okay. So it's not, uh, I, I really, like, I know people might think it's a long process, but actually it's not. Uh, just like this example here, like, you could say it took you five years to learn this, like, to learn this one word. But it's, it, it's not, it didn't actually take me five years. I only got the two examples five years apart. But if I got the, the examples at the same time, so in one lesson, if I could get a couple of different examples that helped me understand something like a native, then I would become fluent very quickly. All right. So the goal is uh, to remove all of the doubt. And so if you remove the doubt quickly, you get fluent quickly. It's not like it doesn't have to be a long and difficult process. Okay. So remember, uh, if you want to get fluent, it is possible to do. That's what we do in Fluent for Life. And we get, fluent people, we get people fluent quickly because we just eliminate the doubt. The point is to eliminate it as quickly as possible. Uh, let's see, Goddess is from Egypt, nice to see you there, just started to improve my English. Uh, I'm an Arabic teacher, by the way, here in Morocco. Well, if you can teach Arabic in Arabic, you can help anybody in the world who wants to learn, and I'm sure there are many people who do. Learning English is a long process. All right, well, I just answered that question. Hopefully that makes sense, though, that language, uh, like English learning, language learning in general, it doesn't have to be a long or difficult process. But if you have good teaching, a good teaching is really just something that eliminates the doubt. So either you are trying to do this by yourself or you can get it done much faster with help like we have in Fluent for Life. But hopefully uh, you have enjoyed this video. Uh, do go back and watch it if you were late for the show. Uh, but I will take a rest, uh, rest my voice and my, my, my mind a little bit. I think I need to take a nap now. I'm working, working too hard. Uh, but hopefully 
uh, people have enjoyed this video. If you have, do click that like button. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know if you have any questions. You can also in, uh, mail us at info at englishanyone.com. Looks like a last comment. Come here. What should I do? I'm very bad. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you so much, teacher. I uh, bought your course, but I haven't used it yet. David, why not? What are you waiting for? Join the program. Get into the program. I know like the first step is just like getting something, but use the lessons. They will actually help you improve. Uh, and we're here if you uh, also have questions about how to use things or uh, if we can help you understand anything better. We're very fast. We really want to, uh, to eliminate any doubt people have. So use the training, join the programs and actually use them. You know, we, I can't like come through the phone or whatever and, and make you learn, but hopefully I can make it easy so it's fun and you actually want to improve. So for the people who do want to speak, we're here to help and we look forward to welcoming you. Uh, how to start in your channel. Well, if, you do, if you're just learning here, just subscribe to the channel like you would su subscribe to any YouTube channel and you can watch our videos anytime. We also have lots of, I think over 600 videos now, uh, plus lots of videos in Fluent for Life. All right, so if you'd like to learn more about that, you can click on the links in the description below this video and let me know if you have any questions for future videos. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.